it says live on my um, laptop. Cool, awesome stuff. So we are live. Welcome everyone and welcome to another round of the Shift Success live streams that we've been doing recently. And today I am joined by a phenomenal human being, a good friend of mine as well now. And um, this individual joined Shift Success Cohort 1 back when we first started. Um, this superstar has, you know, took the business world by storm. He's um, you know, accelerated his first business to a very nice income, which has allowed him to resign from the police. Um, and now he's gone on to become a very successful property investor. And he's going to be sharing with you his story. He's going to be sharing with you his challenges and give you some business lessons going forward. And hopefully to give you some inspiration as well to make shifts to success in your life. And, uh, you know, before you, we begin, if you can hear us, drop us a like, a comment, um, engage with us so we can know you're hearing. And without any further ado, uh, Rob Holmes, welcome. How are you doing? Yeah, yeah, I'm good, mate. How are you? I am very, very well. Um, you said some very nice things about me there. Because you're a nice person, Rob. That's why. A little bit embarrassed now. <laughs> Make you blush. Um, great. So thank you for your time. And uh, Rob, I want to be using this as well for the podcast. And what I want to start asking you is, um, what was it? What was you like as a as a child growing up? Where are you from? And you know, was you a bit of a rebel? Was you a bit of a you know a geek? Or you know, what was what was that like for you growing up? Yeah. So I'm um, I'm down in near Brighton in a little town called Eastbourne. Uh, I really like it here, so I've been here pretty much all my life. Um, to be fair, growing up, I was a, a normal kid, I guess. Uh, I did enjoy school. Uh, I did okay at school. Uh, went on to college. Um, yeah, not not so much of a geek or a rebel or anything like that. Just, just basically just a normal kid, I, I would say. Normal kid. Okay, awesome. And, um, you know, did you go on to do sixth form or college or anything? Yeah, so so from school, I went on to, to college. Um, I just did, you know, like, for A levels or whatever they were, um, and then from there I I went into into work. I didn't I didn't go um, didn't go to university or anything like that. Cool. Okay. And what was your kind of my only one of the only friends in my group that didn't go to university actually? Um, I think I think I was the first year group. It was either the year before me or or I was the first year group that when we went to university we'd have had to to pay for university. It was free just before I was going to go, uh, uh, and I think that put me off because I was like, well. I'm going to have all of this debt all of a sudden um, and I could just go into work. And the way I looked at it was if I, if I go to university, I'm going to get debt, debt, debt year on year. But if I go into work, I'm going to get money, money, money. And the difference between the two was, was huge. And I was like, well, I could either be there or, or up here. So I, I went into work. Amazing. It's one of the actual thought processes that I went through, but I wasn't actually smart enough to probably go to university. So that's my kind of, um, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to use your story from now. And that's, that's great. Um, so what was one of the first jobs that you had and how old was you when you had uh, your first job? You know what? The first, the first job I ever had was in, um, was in like a discount warehouse, kind of like the range, but before the range existed. Uh, and it was a, it was like a, a temporary Christmas job. I think it was 15. I got paid something like two pound thirteen an hour or something like that back in the day, uh, stacking shelves and and sitting on the till and and stuff like that. So it was, that was kind of my first experience of work. Uh, and then from there, I went into um, uh, I was working. It's all, all like while still at college, obviously. And then I went and worked at the David Lloyd, and I was kind of just in the kitchen, like you know, flipping burgers basically and making pizzas and stuff for kids' pies. Uh, that was about sixteen, seventeen. Uh, when I was 18, I did a bit of door work. And then I think I was probably the smallest doorman in the whole of my town. Wow. That's a, you're a bouncer. Yeah, well, yeah. Oh. Yeah. But I was, I was a very nice one. You are very nice. It's kind of hard to imagine <laughs> you being a bouncer. Yeah. Most, most of the others were about four times bigger than me. Um, but yeah, after that, that's when I, um, I joined the police. Wow. Amazing. Um, so what, what, how old was you when you joined the police then? Um, I think I was 20, 20, wow. 21. Wow. Awesome. Okay. And uh, why did you join the police? Um, I think, I think originally I wanted to be a lawyer. Um, a criminal defense lawyer or? I don't know. I just wanted to be a lawyer when I was younger, but as I grew up, I think I realized just how much work that was going to be. I didn't really want to do it. 
Um, and for, for me, I like, I like, how do I put it? How much effort have I got to put in versus the reward I'm going to get? Um, and there was a lot of effort to become a lawyer. And, and I, I, didn't, I didn't see the reward. So I, I changed my mind. Um, but I think the reason I became a police officer is because like our family knew quite a few police officers. Um, so I grew up around, around a couple of them and, and pretty much every single one of them loved it. Absolutely loved it. Um, and they were telling me stories and all that sort of stuff. And I, I think it just kind of sowed the seeds that, that that's where I was, that's where I was going to go. Um, and again, with the university thing, it was like, well, do I want to end up 50 grand, 60 grand in debt after three years or, you know, three years working as a police officer being 60, 70 grand in profit as such, because that's what you'll have earned. You know, that's a massive difference. There's a hundred, 120 grand difference between point A and point B of that choice. Mm. You know what I mean? Yep. Perfect sense. And so that's, that's why I did that. Wow. Awesome. Okay. So you joined the police at a very young age. Um, what force was it from again? Sussex. Six okay, and um, you know, what was that like? What was the first few years like for you? I loved it, absolutely loved it. First few years were absolutely amazing. Um, I had a really, really good team, really, really good sergeant. So, uh, I did a, a kind of half university, half um, on the job based training. So, when I joined, um, a bit like you have cohorts, we had cohorts, and you'd spend four weeks in a, in a classroom. And then you'd spend four weeks on the job and, and that went backwards and forwards five or six times. And then you got assigned to a team. So I was actually um, in Housham. I was under a really, really good sergeant uh, who loved his job. And, you know, he was the, he was the classic good policeman. Always wanted you out there. Always wanted you looking for things. He, he was, he, he hated being stuck in the office doing paperwork he wanted to be out there catching criminals and stuff so we had a really really good time and the, the team that I was with as well was amazing um and loved every single one of them uh so first few years were really really good because we did have some fun awesome awesome stuff um so when did it kind of start or change for you why did you start really thinking about a different career in business um I think I think when I when I started in the police because I was enjoying it so much, I thought I was going to be a career police officer. Um, but I've always been interested in business. So I, I, I had a business on the side, which was, was running martial arts classes. Um, and, I, and it was, in my head, it was like, right, well, I'm going, to, I'm going to have this career over here as a police officer. I'm going to have this business over here as doing martial arts, right? Um, and they'll run quite nicely alongside each other. Um, like I said, I've, I've always been interested in business. I've always liked to spot business opportunities and consider myself a bit of an entrepreneur and, and, and things like that. So um, I was always going to do that. But what happened was after a few years, you know, cutbacks came in, um, you know, there was less staff, there was more stress, more, you know, more weight on everyone's shoulders, really, um, which then perpetuates itself because then there's more sickness and even less staff. Uh, and I think... Uh, you know, I, I don't think I need to go into the ins and outs of, of how bad things got because I think any police officer watching this, pretty much any force, will know that um, that, that things weren't brilliant with the way you're, you're treated by, both by, you know, the people you're dealing with, but also, you know, <laughs> other members of, of, of your team and your crew and, and all that sort of stuff that, you know, there's, there's all sorts of issues within, within, within forces and, and the way things are run and stuff like that. So. I think as that um, pessimism started to come in, it then it then builds and it then grows, and there's so much negativity in the police as well. Anyway, because everyone's unhappy, it's like, especially if you're quite an energetic person, if you feed off of other people's energy, which I do. So if I go into a room and it's buzzing, then I, I will be. But if I go into a room and it's really down and it's really negative and and all of that sort of stuff, then then that will affect me too. So. Um, I think the problem is that because so many people are unhappy and don't really want to be there, um, it, it perpetuates itself and everyone feeds off of each other and it just gets worse and worse and worse, really. Mm. So over time, that started to affect me to a point where I just didn't want to be there anymore. 
Um, so I was like, right, okay, cool. So this isn't for me anymore. What am I going to do about it? So I decided to, to build the, the, well, the other, the other business I was building anyway, right? But I, I wanted to do it to a stage where, you know, I had, had an exit strategy, basically. Amazing. Why, why didn't you think about getting another job? So a lot of people, you know, would think naturally the logical decision is to get another job. Why didn't you do that? Um, <laughs> because I am, I believe I am thoroughly unemployable because entrepreneurs are. Um, and the problem is, is with jobs is anyone that's got kind of an entrepreneur mindset or a business mindset will go in and think I can do this better. I can do that better. You need to change this. You need to change that. Why are you telling me to do this? This is a waste of time. Um, but it's very difficult to hold your tongue when you're an employee and the boss is telling you to do to do something a certain way that you know could be done better. And, uh, and a lot of the time, it's easier just to go out and do it yourself. Awesome. Okay. So, so that's that's kind of why I did that. And I, I you know, I, I a lot of people know what they don't like and what they don't want from life. I, I hate this, or I hate that job, or. No, I hate working these hours or I hate working these shifts or I hate working with this person or whatever. It's very easy to know what you don't want. But a lot of people stop there. They just stop there. They don't think any further. And, and so what you need to do is you need to think, well, I, I don't like this. Well, wh what does that mean I do like? Yeah. Um, so for instance, I, I hate getting up early in the morning. <laughs> it's very it honest with you. Is this? Yeah. Have, have I got you up early this morning for this? Uh... This is okay. This is okay. <laughs> but but for instance, I hate getting up early in the morning, right? Um, so I always hated early shifts. Well, what does that mean? Well, that means well, actually, what I do want is I want to start my working day later. Hmm. Interesting. I now I don't start work before ten a.m. because I don't want to. It's sense. as simple as that. But people don't do that second level of thought when they think about where they're going with life. I think that's so, important. What you're saying here is that you're designing your life based around what you do and don't like. You're designing your lifestyle. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And and what I'd say to people is very sometimes it's very hard. If you don't if you, if you haven't practiced doing it before, it can be very hard to know what you do want. So start with what you don't like and then figure out what the opposite is. So I don't like getting up early in the morning for work. So then what do I want? I'm not going to start my working day before 10 a.m. Easy. Love it. Something else. I don't like working with this type of person. Well, who are you going to work with then? I'm going to work with this type of person over here. And then that, that helps you to kind of design the way you're going to live and work. Amazing. In, in a way that's good for you. you know? So you've been very kind of self-aware, really. You've just been looking internally and thinking, you know, what interests me, what, what don't I like and writing yeah. those things down i was forced to though i didn't it didn't come naturally i was forced to because i got to a stage at work where i was so unhappy and so downtrodden and so downbeaten and and everything was so negative i absorbed so much negative energy that that i had a breakdown and it was like i didn't even know it was coming because the the highest level of negativity became the norm mm. i didn't i didn't know i was in it because it was just there all the time. There was nothing to judge it against. It's just how it was. Um, and then when you, you know, you know, someone once told me, which I think is a really good saying is after a breakdown comes a breakthrough. Mm. And that is what happened. So I had my breakdown, you know, I was very, very ill. I had to have time off work. Um, but it gave, it forced me and gave me the time to sit and, and reevaluate things and actually think on a deeper level, what, what's going on? Because sometimes we're so busy, we don't have time to literally stop and think so much noise tv netflix radio spotify kids the half dogs whatever mm. instagram twitter you know not many people just sit quietly and think inward like you said you know because there's too many distractions but when you do you can actually start to like you said design your your life in a way that that works for you wow wow that is um that is amazing. deep for 11 a.m isn't it yeah yeah i know it's good it's good it's good insight 
um and, you know it's, it's your story it's you know it's it's about you know everyone's got different stories which is um you know it's great that you can share this with us um so talk to me about you know the martial arts side of things you you obviously had that business before you joined shift success and then you joined shift success as a result of you know joining shift success what happened in that business and um you know what was able to gain from shift success okay so so um when i when i joined shift success uh, I had like three martial arts franchises. Yep. So three different towns. And I was doing a, an awful lot myself. Um, so I had to, I had to be at all classes all the time. Um, I had to do all the paperwork, I had to do all the sign ups, I had to do all the direct debits. Because that's what I thought I had to do. Um, Obviously, I learned through systemizing and processing and things like that. Um, that it, it, you know, when you're running a business, it doesn't have to just be you. Mm-hmm. You know, there are ways to to outsource. There are ways to systemize, ways to process that that will help you to scale that business bigger um, uh, and and improve it without it having to be you that does it. Because equally, if you want to start a business and you want to grow that business, you know, that you get different trains of thought. What's the point in, in growing that business and making a load of money if you are not enjoying doing it? Mm, or true. if it's taking you 100 hours a week to do it. It depends what your goals are, right? So, you know, you'll get some, some you know, influencers or, 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 or whatever that say, you know, hustle, 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 work 100, work 120 hours a week, make your billions. Great. That's If, if you want to do that, if you want an awful lot of money, cool. But, but for me, there's got to be balance. And so if you said to me, what do you want? Do you want to make a million pounds a year and work 120 hours a week? Or do you want to earn 100,000 a year and work one hour a week? Mm. Because, you know, you get to a level where you don't need any more. So more money is just extra that, you know, you can spend it if you want, but if you're not spending it, what's the point? And do, do you see what I mean? You've got to a balance between what it is you want, what it is you need and, and where you want to be. So for me, I'm, I'm really good at now because I've practiced it. How much time do I want to put in this? For how much, how much am I going to get? And if I've got to put more time in than what I'm going to get out uh, balance wise, then I, I just don't do it. I love it. I love that. You, you've, you, you are very um, self-aware. You've actually designed, you know, your business, your, your vision. Um, Cause you're right. A lot of people fantasize about being a millionaire or, um, you know, having lots and lots and lots of money in the bank. Um, and just a fun fact, actually 1% of earners, and uh, the highest top earners in the top 1% of the UK are over 146,000. You'd think it's millions, but it's not. If you're earning 146,000, you're in the 1% of in the UK, which is which is pretty cool. And, um, you know, having millions in the bank, but not being able to enjoy your life and spend time with your family, there's no there's no point in doing that because you're one of the reasons for business success is freedom, right? That's what you're saying. Yeah, and, and this is it. And but, but equally, I, I totally agree with you because you and me are very much on the same train of thought. But, but there, there will be people out there maybe watching or whatever that want to be a multimillionaire or want to be a billionaire. And that's okay. That's fine. It, it doesn't, you, we're not right. You're not wrong. We are what we want to be. And we'll, we'll hit our goal for what we want to be, right? It's like you building your business. You know, you, you might be working a lot of hours now but it's not forever. You're doing it now to get to from A to B to then to then not have to, you know, put as much time in it. So you've got you've got to ask yourself why are you doing it? How long are you going to do it for? What what is it that you that you want to get get out of it? You know? That's wisdom. That's pure wisdom. It's um you're right. You know, I've, there's a great quote of, you know, the, the decisions you're making now are reflecting the next five where you're going to be in five years. And um, you know, a lot of our clients, you're a part of our cohorts and you know, a lot of our clients are working full time in the job. They're parents. They've got um, a business as well now. And uh, the initial stages, you're strapped on time. But as soon as you resign from the job, all of a sudden, you've gained back 40 plus hours a working week, which you can yeah. do what you want and, you know, 
live life in your terms. So, yeah, exactly, exactly, and 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 it, it, it it's it, it's about what you want. So for me, you know, I've got a really nice car. I've had that nice car. It's going back soon because uh, the time is running out. I'm not a car person. Mm. At all. I've discovered I don't care what car I drive. You could put me in a crappy old Saxo from 20 years ago, and I'd be happy. Mm-hmm. Um, I know, you know. Don't take that the wrong way. You know, sometimes you have to. You, you know, if if you're looking at investment, you can't turn up in a 20 year old car because it might send the wrong impression. It should do. It yeah. should yeah. do. But you know, it does. But you know, people like Warren Buffett still drive a Prius. Mm-hmm. It's true. You know, it doesn't drive a Ferrari. Um, but yeah, so so for me and, and for you guys as well, think about if you're looking to build a business to earn the money, why? If you want that nice car, cool. So right, I need to do this much business to be able to get this car. I need to be able to do that much business to get that holiday. And, and I used to work things out in terms of how many clients I needed. Mm-hmm. So as an example, um, the car is 300 a month, right? And so I know that at the time, some of my prices were like 30 pound a month. Mm-hmm. Okay, martial arts fees. So I didn't work out. I need to, you know, I need to make 300 pounds a month. I worked it out as, right, I need to go and get 10 clients. I need to go and get 10 new monthly clients and I can have that car when I wanted that car. So that's what I did. Amazing. Yeah, that, that's, you know, that's, that's how you should work things out in terms of how many clients, how many sales to get this or that or the other. Awesome. It just sets that goal, you know? And, and it is, it's very, very different. Like you mentioned, you know, you're not materialistic at all. And, you know, I've known you and you've, you traveled to Bali and uh, yeah. for, for you, it is about that freedom, right? It's about that yeah. flexibility to just get up, go to Bali. And I think you was there for how long? A month, maybe? Um, Two months? Been a couple of times. When are we talking? The last one. Uh, so the last time I went for two weeks and then the time before that, I did four weeks around uh, the Philippines and Bali. Yeah. Awesome. Great. So, and that's more meaningful to you, right? The actual experiences that you gain from life. hundred percent. I'm so happy in like crappy pair of flip flops, <laughs> old t-shirt and sitting on a beach or something like that. But although that's amazing to me, again, there's only so much of that you can do. Of course. So some of you might be watching, and thinking, yeah, I want that lifestyle. I want to be able to go away and just, sit on the beach forever you don't trust me it's it's not great it's amazing to begin with but as with anything so so i was very lucky i got to a stage where i didn't have to work um and i was kind of focusing on my businesses and stuff but i wasn't really working Mm. so i had like two years of 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 not really working basically Mm. and there was only so much netflix and dog walking and playstation you can play before you go mental like (laughs) You need to have purpose. You need to do something. So Very true. Um, that's why I'm, I'm doing something else now is because I, I have to be, I have to, time off is good, but you know, if you've got that entrepreneur mindset and you've got that business mindset, you won't be able to have time off forever. So I, although I love Bali and I love America, I couldn't just go and do, go there and do nothing. Mm. You know, might be able to do it for a month, but then I'd get itchy feet and I'd, I'd have to be doing, doing something. So, so what I'm doing now is, designing and positioning my life in a way where I will be able to do those things and continue generating money. Amazing. And keeping like the, the gray matter ticking over like, yeah. So if I want to go to Bali for a month or two months, I'll be able to do that whilst earning money, having fun and, and, and being able to work as well. Awesome. Awesome stuff. Talk to me about the resignation. So you've resigned from the police now. Um, <laughs> Two years ago. Yeah, two. I know it's two years ago. I was Man, looking, isn't it? looking through the Facebook group the other day, and um, I think you literally, when you was just at the start of Shift Success Cult One or rare about there, you decided to resign. Is it just before ten years as well? Service. Yeah, I think it was nine years and five months, or nine years and seven months. It would have been great to get like a ten year certificate, but <laughs> let's stick around. <laughs> Talk to me about that moment. You know, how did that fit for anyone who's watching about, you know, you've got the income now, you've got this, you know, life now. For anyone watching this, thinking about or dreaming of handing the resignation due to being unhappy in the job. And remember, all this, all these podcasts, all these, um, you know, live streams are about if you're unhappy with this situation, helping you change it, you know, empowering you to change. With Rob, he was unhappy. 
Um, for you, Rob, explain to those what how that felt for you handing the resolution. Yeah, cool. Okay. So to just before I do that, it's 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 not for me. It wasn't only being unhappy. I was unhealthily unhealthy. Mm. So so I, I for me it was that the fact that I was unhappy. I had a health issue as well, and I had to make a choice that do I do I continue this and end up get, becoming more unhappy and more unhealthy. What am I going to do something about this? Because I, I knew it was going to have a, a really, really unfortunate outcome for, for my life if I carried on. And that was just, just that was my situation. Um, so, so for me, it was very scary because the, the thing is with, with something like, like the police, so any kind of um, very secure job like that, you know, you have that security blanket. I knew there was that check coming every month. Um, and I knew how to do the job, you know, get up and just do it. Um, as well as that, I really liked the people I work with. You know, some of those, they were really, really good friends. They were good people. Um, and actually, they, to be fair, it was mainly the people I was working with that made me able to stick it out so long. Um, if I'm honest, and and out and, and from the job, really, other than blue light runs, I miss that. Matt, <laughs> it's the, the 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 thing I miss is is the people that I work with, the team I I work with, um, as people because I really did love them. So that was you know for me that was hard. It's hard to do that, and also it's it's like it's that moment of standing on like the edge of a cliff, you know. And um, to be fair, I've never bungee jumped before, but I guess if you're gonna you know jump off into some water or, or jump off for a bungee jump or jump out of a plane for you know skydiving it's that moment of do i jump or not where you're like uh, uh, and you're not sure whether to go ahead so so yeah so i um i i got it framed and everything i like a little bit of um zazz so i got my uh i got my resignation framed and i got a cake baked that said see you later with my warrant number on it over and out and I put the uh, signed resignation and the cake on the briefing room table for the for the early turn meeting and and it was it was like I said it was very hard I almost didn't do it I did do it but I was there and I, I had to stop for a minute I was like oh do I do this am I making the right choice am I not because you will doubt yourself obviously uh, and you will worry but that's, you know, that's okay. That's natural. So the weirdest thing was when I, when I took the resignation out of the bag and I put it on the table, still holding on to it, but I put it on the table and then I let go. And then when, as soon as I let go and I stood there and it was there on the table, it was the weirdest thing. It was like, it was like this physical weight came off of me. Like I just felt it come off of like my head and my shoulders and and I, and I just did this big, big breath and I was like, done. Wow. And, 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 and that was it. So it was, it was a big thing for me, you know, and some people might be listening and going, oh, you're over-exaggerating. Oh, you're making a big thing out of this. But I'm just telling you how it was for me, you know. Amazing. For you. for you, it might be like, yeah, here's a bit of paper, I'm off. <laughs> like, yeah. And, I... and nothing happens, you know. Um, so everyone, everyone is different. And, and all I can do is, is tell you my experience and, and my reasons for doing stuff um, and, and kind of how I've grown since then or and, and my tips for kind of helping yourself to grow and, and, and find your way and, and all that sort of stuff. What you've just mentioned there is quite, you know, from an analogy, analogy point of view is like you've, you've, you know, about jump leaping off, off a bridge or, you know, parachuting what you're saying there, would would you find, it was scary up until the point, the ledge, but as soon as you went and let go, all of a sudden you were weightless, like you would do. Yeah, I've heard, yeah. I've, heard, I've, heard, yeah. I've heard Will Smith explain this. Will Smith does an interview and he explains about fear. And fear is about this, you know, you are, you're about to go on a parachute dive and he's, at, he's scared, he can't sleep the night before. And all of a sudden when he's opening the doors to jump out, he's still very scared. But as soon as he jumps, yeah, actually, you wait less. It's the best experience of life. Is that what you found knowing because you built a business and the income was there? Yeah, yeah, and I think also, I think it. 
I had the confidence in myself. Mm. You know, I, I, I had the confidence in myself. I knew that I would be able to do it. It's just, it, it, even if someone says, this is going to be okay, you've, you, you're going to do this, I can guarantee you, I can see the future and I can guarantee you're going to be okay. It's like still handing that resignation in, it's still a um, scary thing to do. Awesome. It is. Yep, yep. I mean, even as a DO, I think, you know, I think I'd still had a bit of fear because, you know, it's still, it's not that regular <laughs> paycheck anymore. Um, so um, I want to talk about you because you're a bit of a serial entrepreneur. You have, uh, you've started many, many things and you're now a property investor as well. Um, yeah. Talk to me, you know, what is your, what, what, what are you doing in business right now? You, you're investing in property and I believe you are starting a, uh, you're a broker as well, right? Yeah. So, so I love property investment. Okay. So um what what I was doing when I was younger I would buy a property move into it so you know I do like most people do get a little 10% deposit together and move into it and then and what I would do is I would save another 10% deposit and then buy another one and move into that but what most people do is when they move on they sell the home that they were in um but I never did that I'd keep it and I'd just save that next 10% deposit and I would move on and then I'd keep the, the, the property that I'd, I'd left to rent out. And that's how I kind of built a very small portfolio, but it took, you know, six or seven years to do that. And after six or seven years, I, I kind of wasn't really making much money from property. Um, and, and I was like, well, I must be doing something wrong. So I, I you know, I, I educated myself and I, I, you know, I looked into that. Um, and, and like anything, you know, become an expert in something. So in your business, become an expert. If you're, if you're, going to run your business as a hobby you're going to make hobby level money yeah right yeah, yeah i love it you know, if you if, if you're going to run your business as an expert you'll make expert level money so i didn't want hobby level money from my property i wanted expert level money so so i did that um i'm now doing property investments faster safer quicker better making more doing it far do it and doing it quicker right um, getting more return on on the money. So what I was doing is from from my from my business, I was I was basically living off the police income, you know, my paycheck, uh, and then the the business money I was I was funneling that into property. So I was compounding my returns. So I made money from business, and then invested that and made money from that and compounded and compounded. And compounded. So it got to a stage where, you know, I'm very fortunate. Like I said, I, I don't, I don't have to work. I don't want to, but I, I want to, mm. so it's a very nice place to be. Um, and I still love doing property investment. So I'm still doing that. So I've got, uh, I've got a one bed flat that I've just turned into a two bed, two ensuite. Um, I've got a two bed house. I've just bought. I'm turning that into a five bed, five ensuite. Um, all of that sort of stuff. So I've always got, you know, one, two, three projects on the go at once um and you know some stuff i've got in my own name stuff some stuff i've got in my own limited company um some stuff i'll do with other people so so what i do is i work with people in in two ways really on that is people that have got money in the bank that don't really know what to do with it or don't have the time to do anything with it or don't have the knowledge Mm. you know private knowledge and and you know effort is required and and sometimes people don't have that um, so I give people a better return than the banks give them. I mean, the banks have just lowered the base rate now anyway. It's like 0.1%, right? Crazy. Like, literally, your money is going down if you leave it in the bank. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. Because inflation is more, right? Yeah. So leave your bank, your money in the bank for a year. After a year, your money is actually worth less money than what it was at the beginning of that year. Very true. And look, so many people crazy. aren't aware of that. They don't know. They don't realize that. They think, oh, you know, I've got 10,000 in the bank. In a year, I've still got 10,000 in the bank. You don't. That 10,000, the buying power of that 10,000 is less than it was a year ago. It's true. Very true. Basically. Um, and so what I do is I offer people much more, 6 to 8%. I guarantee that. I do all the work. Yeah, it's all my risk. Okay. Um, so that works for them. Mm. You know, um, I've got one investor gave me £30,000 for three years. That was, that was one telephone conversation. Just explain what I do, how I do it. She was happy. She actually wanted to give me the money so that she wouldn't spend it on crap. 
and spend it elsewhere. So it's almost giving it to me to keep it safe for her. Mm. Um, I've got someone else that gave me just shy of 60,000, uh, a little bit more short term for a couple of projects. Um, and what I like to do for me, everything in business is relationships. Mm. Everything is relationships. So, um, you know, I've turned people with money down. Um, I, I had, I, I was speaking to some people with quite a few hundred thousand pounds. And I just got that icky feeling about them and working with them. So I didn't, you know. Can that's your police officer intuition kicking in there? Like that gut? I guess so, yeah. And a bit of gut feeling as well. And, and for me, like I said, everything is, is about having a great relationship with someone and liking who you're working with now. You know, I had to deal with so many horrible people in the police over 10 years, like as we do. Um, I didn't want to do that anymore. So I only want to deal with people I like. Um, and so, uh, yeah, so I, I turned that down. So, you know, a few hundred thousand pounds for me to go and invest is great. I can, I can do a number of properties with that, make a lot of money, but it's not all about that. I want to actually enjoy making the money I'm making and I want it to feel and be easy, not hard. Mm. Yeah, because it, sometimes we... We get in our heads that bit, making money has to be hard, and sometimes yeah. that is self fulfilling prophecy, right? Yeah. Again, I'd rather make an easy fifty grand than a hard two hundred and fifty grand. Mm. Yep. It, you know, makes perfect and sense. Easy. I don't mean cutting corners. I mean easy, as in nice. Mm. You know, it's yeah. like if I worked with you because I know you and I like you and we get on, and someone said, "Right, like, you and Alex are going to make fifty grand this year." I'd be like, great. If you put me in front of someone else who I didn't know, mm. if I get on, our values weren't aligned, but I was going to make 250 grand with them that year. I wouldn't do it. I'm not yeah. interested. Get it. I'd rather make a nice, fun 50 grand with you than someone I don't know. Is that like your values? So you're putting your values before the money then, which is saying you're putting that, that alignment in values between two individuals. Yeah. But, but the thing is, by doing that, it brings the right kind of money to me. Mm. Interesting. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Um, so for instance, the, the 30, 30 grand from the investor I, I borrowed, really lovely lady. I keep her updated. I send her photos of projects. So she's given me that money to kind of use carte blanche as I want. It goes into the company and I do it on whatever project I want to do it on. And I keep recycling it. And I just send her videos, updates. We chat. We just, you know, we'll, like the other week we had like a Zoom coffee. Yeah. Because we can't meet each other. Of course. Yeah. Catch up. How's life? What's going on? Because we've become friends, you know, and I'm, I'm interested in her life and she's interested in mine because we've got the similar values and things like that. Um, the people that gave me just shy of 60 grand, you know, they've, they've put it into one project that's now done, finished. We're just waiting to refinance that. Actually, we can't get it valued at the moment because of coronavirus. So we're just waiting for that to end. That money will come out of there and go straight into the next project, which I've already started, which is that five bed HMO. You know, again, I send them before and after videos. They're welcome to come to site whenever we catch up. One of them wants to be in property, so I kind of mentor him as well. And he runs some of his own deals past me, and I check them for him. And you know, it's a two-way thing, yeah? Um, I've got a friend, actually. I've got a, a friend. I've known him about 20 years. Really, really good friend. And he's agreed this week. He's actually, he's just come into to six figures, and he's agreed this week to, to work with me on that. So, like I said, when we started this bit of the conversation, I work with people in two ways. The first is to, to borrow money on a percentage basis. So no risk for them, no involvement for them. You know, they just, they give me the money, I invest it, I buy the property, they get a return. Um, and then the other is like on a joint venture basis. So in other words, going into business with someone. But again, I don't just go into business with anyone. I, got, I can trust them. Yeah. But what's great is... I think it was a guy called Jim Rohn said, if you, if you help enough people get what they want, you'll get what you want. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think it was Jim Rohn, but I know that's a quote, really, really good quote. And so, so my friend has watched me for, you know, how many years do this. And, and he now knows that I am the expert. I am an expert in, in that field. I know what I'm doing. It's safe. Yeah. And it's a hell of a lot safer doing it with me than it is with, someone that doesn't know what they're doing. Well, so here's another thing. So I wrote some notes down here and, you know, just for those who are just tuning in, what essentially Rob's done is build a business first to accelerate his income. He's then resigned from the job with that same income and then gone into property. So he's done business first, then investments. But what you just said there about safer doing it with you, 
don't forget you're an ex cop, right? You know, if I'm going to give anyone my money, it's going to be yeah, a yeah. cop because I trust them. You know, they've got this integrity, they've got the trust. Um, do you find that really helps you as well? Um, yeah, I mean, if I'm honest, I don't really mention too much about being an ex police officer unless someone asks me what what I what I did or, or they want to know about a bit about me. I'll tell them I was a police officer for ten years. But yeah. but yeah, I think there there is that trust that that comes with that. Unless people, that you're dealing with someone that doesn't like the police, then <laughs> I think that business is over before it starts. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, you do. You, you get that trust. But but in terms of helping my friend, he's got all this money, right? Now, if he goes and invests it himself, he'll get a few properties and he'll do okay. But the deal we've put together is that we'll start a company together 50-50 He'll put the money in, which obviously will go back to him at some point. That money is ring fence. That's his, right? But everything I build in that company, I get 50% of the property and 50% of the monthly income. But his 50% of that company that I build using his money will give him more money than if he went off and tried to do it himself and got 100%. Partnerships, yep. yep love so it. His 50% of something with me is still going to be worth more than 100% of him doing it himself because I am the expert and I know how to make that happen. I love it. You know what I mean? It's a bit like you. You're the expert in business. Mm. So if I come, if I go and start a business without you, I've got 100% of doing everything my way, right? But let's say I started a, I, I, well, I did join Shift Success, but, but doing it through Shift to Success, You've got the expert, you're the expert, you know, and you are the coaches and the, the portal and all that sort of stuff that makes it safer, that makes it quicker, that makes it better to, to do it, to do that business. Mm. Yeah? yeah. But I think sometimes people don't think like that. So luckily my friend trusts me enough to, to, to come to that realization, but he might go, oh, well, I can do it myself. Everyone wants to do it themselves to save money. I yeah I, I say this on I've done a number of podcasts I would not be living this lifestyle I have right now if it wasn't for my mentors my you know friends the, the people who I learn from the books I read um there's no I think in business guys if you're listening you've got to have humility um as you know joining the uh, the police for the first time to become a police officer you learn through training school you get mentorship initially to learn to read and write, you learn from teachers and parents, to learn to drive a car, you learn from a driving instructor. When it comes to, you know, business or investments, you know, learn from someone who's already got, you know, the results that you want to get. It's something I've done to get where I am right now and I'll continue to do it. And my mentors have got mentors and their mentors have got mentors. Um, so it's great. Now I completely agree with you, Rob. Um, and, 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 and it goes back to give, give enough people what they want and you'll get what you want. I'm giving my friend what he wants. Well, I'm giving all my investors what they want. So the people that just give me money for a return, I'm giving them what they want, which is like 60, 70, 80 times the interest that they get leaving it in the bank. Like, yeah. the, the actual problem I face is that it sounds too good to be true. And then people get sometimes get suspicious about it. And, and I get that. I totally get that. Because if I, you get 0.1% in the bank, how can you give me 6 to 8%? And then it's almost like well, I, sh I should be offering people 4% because it would sound more realistic to them and they'd probably give me more money. But I can do it because I know what I'm doing. And you as a business owner know what you're doing. And, and people watching, if you're looking at starting a business, you will know what you're doing. Yeah, you'll have that skill. You'll have that expertise. With my friend, you know, he knows I know what I'm doing. All the systems and processes will be in place. And, and again, going back to what do you want out of what it is? So let's say, for instance, it's, it's, it's 100 grand that he's going to put in the company. It's, it's a little bit more than that, but 100 grand is an easy number. If he says to me, if he says to me, Rob, I need 10% return on my money. I must get 10% return on my money. That means for the 100 grand he puts in, he needs to get 10 grand back. Yep. Yeah, a year. Okay. Well, that means if he's getting 50% of the company, and this is the type of things that we chat about, you and me chat about, and you help me with, and you've taught me and things like that, is that is working out your numbers, is if he's got to get 10% and he's got 50% of the company, well, I get 10%. So I have to find deals. I have to find investments that will give us 20%. Of course, yeah. So we'll get his 10. Mm -hmm. Makes perfect sense. So, 
So every deal I do, I'll be looking at, are we going to get a minimum 20%? Are we going to get a minimum 20%? What's so great about that is for him, 10% is an amazing return. Mm. For me, I do that without getting out of bed. My own deals, I go 25% minimum. Yep, yep. You, you know, some of my deals are 30, 40% ROI. I can, I can remember talking through a deal with you, um, yeah, just after the co op one, and it was a phenomenal deal. Um, I mean, some of them, are, I get all the money. Some of them are infinite return because I get all the money back out. So, so the thing is to, to get him 10 is he thinks I'm doing a great job. Yeah. I'm not even breaking a sweat. Yeah, yeah. I love <laughs> but, it. But that's because I've, I've, I've invested in myself to get to that stage where that becomes easy. Of course, skill set. So, skill set you developed, which is obviously, you know, helps you tenfold. Yeah. Um, and, and then the other thing is, the other thing is, is that I like, again, I like to kind of see where there are connections and opportunities and stuff. And, and I was, I was, because of the circles I've got in terms of friends or other investors, I was sending so much business to my mortgage broker, who's, you know, who's making so much money doing that. I was like, well, because I'm doing all these strategies with certain types of finance, bridging, mortgages, buy to let, HMO, all of that. I know it. I know it from an investor's point of view. I'm doing most of the talking. I'm doing most of the selling, right? All I was doing is sending them over to him and then he was, he was, he was doing the mortgage for them. I thought, well, I could do this. <laughs> you could, and this has got itchy feet and you've started it. I got itchy feet. <laughs> I was like, I, because remember what I said about um, effort versus reward? For me, talking about mortgages and finance and investments is easy. So it wasn't, it wasn't hard at all for me to take one extra step and actually start doing the mortgages myself. Love it. So I do that now. And now I make all the money instead of him. I, mean, I love it. It's, it's amazing. That's, it's, it's, you know, yeah. you spot an opportunity. It's an amazing yeah. thing. I want to talk the, about... The great, the great, sorry, sorry, to interrupt. The great thing with that, the great thing with that, and this is, this is the, the beauty of business and lifestyle when you get to a stage where all of the choice is on you. I choose exactly who I work with. I do not work with clients because I have to work with clients and because I have to have an income. I don't. So if someone comes to me and says, can you help me with my mortgage? And I either don't want to do it or I don't like them or they're trying to do something dodgy or wrong or, or whatever, I can just say no. Amazing. So, or don't think and don't feel that they can say no to business. I love it. I love it. It's, it's so awesome. I know. How much power is that for yourself, right? And not from an egotistical point of view at all or an arrogant point of view, but from a, from a, a, like a spiritual and an energetical point of view that you are completely and totally in control of doing what you want to be doing and not having to work with people or, or do things you don't want to do. Great. Completely agree with you. Robert, what you you are, you know, how much was you earning in the job? About thirty-seven thousand as a top whack PC? Uh, something like that. But I I obviously it's I'll be honest, I can't exactly yeah. remember because I reduced my hours. Of course. It, it didn't. I do remember I dropped down hours, yeah. then I dropped down a bit more as the business went up. So of course. why I did it is I as my business, so police was here and business was here. And as as my business went up. I reduced the hours in the, in the police, if that makes sense. Smart move. It's, it's, it's exactly the process that you, sh, you know, we recommend. And it's a safe way of doing it as well, because now you've got income from your business, but you are over, you're, you're actually earning over a hundred thousand pound now from a value perspective. Cause I believe every police officer should be, you know, paid way more for what they do. You know, I've, you know, I was a DO and, you know, I wasn't out on the streets and uh, well, I was as a special, but I wasn't, you know, full time in that situation. Um, you know, from the value you did as a police officer to, to, you know, being in business and you're paying this much now compared to being a police officer, how does that make you feel? Well, it's, well, it's amazing. <laughs> Quite. It's, it, yeah. Well, it is though, isn't it? It's, it's, it just gives you choices. It gives you the choices to, like I said, you're in, I know I'm laboring the point, but going back to what you do and don't want to do mm -hmm. choice, money, money, shouldn't make the world go round, but it does. Um, and money gives you choices. If you don't have money, you don't have choices. You might have to do something you don't want to do because you don't have the money not to. Love it. I yeah. Love it. Yep. You know? Um, and, um, and the thing the thing is for me now, it's not about it's not about it, it, we can 
we could end up going really, really deep in terms of like expenditure and you know your outgoings, your income, and all of that sort of stuff. So let's. Well, we'll save that for another one. We'll save that. Yeah, we'll be there forever. <laughs> Stop talking about all of that. No, it's um, it's it's really great to see, and you know, it, you've achieved it. It's, it's something you've worked for, um, and now you've designed your life where you get to do what you want to do. Um, I want to talk about um, some of the mindset differences that you've had from being a police officer to you know now being a business owner and investor. What some like differences have you noticed? Um, well, there's there's a lot less negativity in my life because uh, I'm I'm not around it as much. Don't get me wrong, you know, I'm not saying that all of it was negative all the time. I'm not saying that. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying everybody was negative all the time, but Mm -hmm. it felt like there was an awful lot of that. That was a a, a lot of the majority. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, And everyone's everyone's experience will be different. Some people were going to love the job and always love it. And, And that's, that's, that's amazing. So happy for you. That's great. Um, I wish that I did love the job still, you know, um, and and had continued to. But it's just my, my path was didn't take me that way. So so mindset is is great because you know I have a lot more time on my hands. I have I have time to work on mindset. There isn't as much noise. Yeah, I'm not in as much as a rush. My sleep is better. My diet is better. My health is better everything is better because I have the time and the, the money uh, and the energy to, to be better. I love it. Um, what skill sets do you think you've transferred into from being a cop into business? Oh, so, God, like for those of you that are listening, you know, for, for any, any negative things that I might say about the job, it's not all that, right? It's not just negative. There are some unbelievable positives that you will gain from the job. And it is the skills that you will learn. 100%. No one can ever say otherwise or take away from you what you will learn. And this is one thing that you, I know you and me have had this conversation before, Alex, is that a lot of police officers don't actually realize the amount of transferable skills they have and how good those skills are and how high level those skills are. And I'll tell you why they don't notice because they're working with a whole load of other police officers who also have those skills. Mm. Yeah. So it's like, if all you ever see is dark, everything you, you don't know about the light. Yeah. Or the other way around. If all you ever see is negative, you don't know about positive. Same. if all you ever see is everyone with the same skills of communication, negotiation. Yeah. Um, writing skills, driving skills, paperwork skills, organizational skills, times, all of these skills that, that coppers have, and a lot of them, you know, two big ones are communication and negotiation, right? You don't realize that people who are not in the job, most people do not have those skills. They don't. Not only do they not have them, they're actively not good at them. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Communication I agree. is the biggest one. Yep. So many people who are just really not good at communicating and not aware of the way they're communicating. Right? Problem solving as well, resilience, assertiveness, all Problem, skills you need in business. Yeah, resilience, big one, yeah. Problem solving, of course. So, so the thing is, is that you think, oh, I haven't got any skills. You've got so many. If you've been in the job, you've got so many skills that you would have picked up, Right. That, that a lot and, you, and they will just be natural to you now you won't need training on them you've, you've done them for five six ten years talking to drunks on the street or domestic abuse victims or whatever you've got those they're in you now they're like in your dna you you know and you you if you did ever go on a, a on a on a on a course on communication or something you'd probably sit there and be like i know all of this this is mm. why are you saying that that's bloody obvious yeah. it's not to people that don't have those skills yeah. So, so a hundred percent for me, communication and negotiation transferred so well. And I, I keep saying about everything is relationships. So I work on building good relationships with my investors or potential investors. Yeah. And look what's come of it. The money that I have access to the joint ventures I have access to my right? um, relationships with estate agents, 
yeah, relationships with solicitors, relationships with current clients that will create new clients, yeah? Because, because I'm lucky enough to have the choice of, it's like I, I, I had a client I recently did a bridging loan for, right? I got paid well for it. Now, most brokers might, and I put this in the group actually, most brokers might not get them anything, say, oh, congratulations on an email. Some brokers might get them a 10, 15, 20 quid Marks and Spencer voucher. I followed on from what you did when you got me a really nice bottle of champagne. Yeah. So I don't know if you remember, you got me a really nice bottle of champagne. In a, it came in like a chest with a drawer in it. It was really posh with some nice chocolates in it. But for those, for those who are just wondering what the hell we're going on about, we've got a bit of a shift success tradition. So Rob, uh, for anyone who hit, achieves over six figures as a part of our cohorts, we buy a fancy bottle of champagne and a box of uh, chocolates, which is a very posh thing that we do. Uh, and, and it had, you know, Rob's name on, et cetera. And um, it's something that we've, we've, we've done from day one. So it's just to give some context to it, carry on, Rob. Yeah, so, so I stole that idea, basically. Yeah. It's a good idea. And what I did is I put on the, on the champagne bottle, I put congratulations with their name and then the address of the investment property that they'd bought, right? So they've got that bottle of champagne. They can have the champagne and then keep the bottle as a memento. And every time they buy something through me, they're going to get a bottle with the, the label personalized to the address they've bought. So they can almost collect those as well, right? Now, that is building a relationship. And I haven't done that just to impress them or get new clients or have them give me referrals. I've done that because they're really awesome people. I really like them. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, how cool is this as a gift? Right. But I've done that because I want to do it. But I, I do also know that because I've done that, they will refer people to me. They will come back to me. Yeah. And, and I got a really nice text from them saying it's like the nicest gift that, that anyone's ever gotten type thing. So that was a mate. That was really cool for me to be able to do that. Yeah. That's awesome. Not, Lovely. Um, with regards to someone thinking about, so we've got obviously a lot of police officers who are interested in business and don't know where to start. What's a bit of advice you'd give, you know, with regards to, you know, um, taking that f first step, what's some advice you'd give? Well, just do it. I mean, if you've got, if you've got a business idea, if you think, if you think it's you that you're not good enough to do it or that, you know, you, you don't have the skills to do it, then, then you're probably wrong. If I'm honest, you can do it. You, you probably do have the skills. Um, and even if they're just raw skills or raw talent, that's where you come in. Mm. Right. That's where, well, shift to success and you as the coach come in to, to refine that, that raw skill, that raw talent, that raw idea into something tangible that will become a money-making business. Um, I think people should definitely start at least if they're if they're watching by reading your book. Yeah, looking at looking at the the Facebook videos and stuff, chatting to some of the other people that have been on been on the course, how they found it, and you know, I know there's there's other people. You know, we've had a chat about a couple of different people that are doing really really well. Mm -hmm. You know, and the thing is, if if you want to do it, do it. it, it it's like if you want to moan about your current position, that's okay. If you're not happy with your current position and you want to tell people about it and be, be negative, that's okay. But don't be doing the same thing in a year's time because now you've lost the right to be moan and negative about it. In my opinion, and that's my opinion, some people might disagree with that. And, and the thing is this is, that's one of the things that got me is that, you know, there were certain people at, at work that would always be moaning about the same stuff. Um, which is fine. And I left and about a year later, I went to the Christmas party and some of the same people were saying exactly the same thing. And obviously I hadn't heard it for a year, but then to hear exactly, it was like Groundhog Day, one year later, mm. same stuff being said. I'm like, okay, so when you were moaning about it to start with, fine, I get it. But again, it's just my view. It's like a, the, a way I think is that I, I don't think you've still got the right to carry on moaning a year later when you could do something about it. 
I think complainers love complaining as much as they love not thinking <laughs> about it. Uh, right. Same as in custody. A lot of, you know, my old colleagues were moaning and they're still there. And, you know, I hear from that. They are still moaning sometimes and we get it. It makes us feel better, but nothing's going to change without you changing something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. If you don't change, nothing will change. Yeah. hundred percent. Cool. 100%. So, so yeah, that's, that's, that's the main thing is if you're, if it's, if you're ready to do it now, do it. If you're not fine, but don't keep complaining and complaining and complaining about your situation if you're not going to do anything about it. Because eventually people get bored of listening to you. <laughs> yeah. About it. yeah, it's true. It's true. Um, Rob, um, I always like to end with this with this question on our, on our podcast. Um, but what does entrepreneurship mean to you? Ah, oh, That's a really good question. That is a really good question. I would, I would say, well, it's that, it's that, it's that je ne sais quoi, isn't it? It's that, that French saying, there's that certain something. And, and I think, I think that for me, it's being able to spot an opportunity and then do something about it. Right? So it's like, there's an opportunity, there's a niche here, there's an opening here. And then I'm going to do something about it. Loads of people have great ideas. But if you don't do anything about it, someone else will. Mm. Yeah. Um, and it's like, it's, it's acting on it, but it's not only that, it's, it's loving doing that. Yeah. Loving. Here's this opportunity to, to, to do a business of some sort. And, I, and I'm going to do it. And I love doing it. And I'm getting what I want which is a buzz from doing business. You know, I'm making money doing it. I'm helping people. I'm making friends. I'm building great relationships. You know, it's, it, it's such a, it's a, such a comprehensive, such a simple question, but you need such a comprehensive answer, don't you? And I think we need longer to talk about it, but um, there's a, there's this whole, whole bubble that, that is entrepreneurship and there's so many facets to it, but, I think if, if you were trying to cut it down, it's, it's being able to spot an opportunity, take action on that and love doing it. And, and, and almost like always being on to that. Like my brain is just always on to, oh, there's a business opportunity there. Oh, I can make loads of money doing that. Oh, I could do that better. Oh, you should improve this this way. And it's just, for me, that's natural. It happens. I can't turn it off, you know, but that's my entrepreneurial brain and, and different entrepreneurs are going to be wide different. So if you don't think like the way I've just explained, it doesn't mean you're not an entrepreneur. It just means what I've explained is that's the type of entrepreneur I am. Of course. Yeah. So you're not labeling. You are. You're not labeling essentially. No, no, no. So different entrepreneurs have different skill sets and different strengths. Mm. And so you've got Warren Buffett, you've got Richard Branson, totally different people. Yeah, yeah. Both billionaires. Yeah. Right. But they will have done it in different ways and their brains will work in different ways and their their entrepreneurial thought process processes will work in different ways. Amazing. Use your expertise, use what you're good at, use your niche and apply it, apply it to business. And that'll be that'll be your entrepreneurial path. Amazing. And also, also, actually, one thing that's really, really important is knowing what your strengths and weaknesses are. Mm. So I didn't know that. I didn't know that, right? I thought I had to do everything. I thought business, well, I've got to do everything. I've got to do the accounts. I've got to do this. I've got to do that. I've got to do everything. It's not. It's, it's being a really good entrepreneur is being able to let go of the ego of I've got to do everything and I've got to be right and I've got to be the best at it and saying, right, and being honest with yourself what am I really, really good at? Which is hard for people because they think they're boasting about themselves. So they don't like to do it. And then also, what am I really, really bad at? Which people also don't like to, to do because they're admitting they're not good at something. Mm -hmm. Got to do both things. And then once you know what you're really, really, really bad at, don't ever do it again. Get someone else to do it. And the things you're really, really good at, that's all you do. So in my businesses now, anything that I know that I am good at, I'm doing it. And I focus you know, 90 to 100% of my time on that 
you know, I might do 10% here and there of things that I'm mediocre at or, or not so good at if I have to. But everything I don't like doing, I'm not good at, you know, drives me crazy. I get rid of it because then I can focus me as the driver of the business, as the entrepreneur on the bits that I'm good at to, to force it forward. Makes sense. That is powerful, powerful stuff. And I completely agree with everything you're saying. It's powerful stuff, guys. That's a, that's a business lesson in itself. Um, Rob, you have been an inspiration to, you know, myself, the team we have at Shift Success, the cohorts and you know, the future cohorts because you were on cohort one. And I'm sure you've inspired lots and lots of many people watching this. Um, you know, where can people, can people reach out to you? Where can they connect with you after this? Yeah. Okay. So, um, obviously connect with me on Facebook. So I'm in, I'm in the group. Uh, so it's Rob Holmes, R O B and then H O L M E S. Um, my, is this, is this in, is this on the main page? This is Facebook. Facebook. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Cool. So if anyone wanted to kind of, um, send me an email, you can do that. So, um, if you wanted to send me an email about kind of property and investment, you can get me at, uh, the email is rob at precisepropertygroup.co.uk. So it's rob at precisepropertygroup.co.uk. If you need any help with things like mortgages or finance, if you are buying property, it'll be rob at shmortgages.co.uk. Um, and mainly get me on, get me on Facebook. So if you want to connect, send me a message. So long as you're not a nutter. I'll give you my mobile and we can have a chat. Awesome. Rob, that is a... But even if it's just kind of business or shifts to success, or if you all want the dirty on Alex, you know, I'll tell you over <laughs> Rob's got plenty of dirt on me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so that's, that's absolutely fine. So either of those emails, Facebook is best. And then if you want to chat about anything, um, just let me know. We can arrange a call. It's fine. Happy to help. Amazing. Rob, uh, at Spirit Hero, powerful, powerful interview. And uh, yeah, you're an inspiration to many. Um, Thank you so much for your time. Um, I will look forward to seeing you continue success. Um, and I'm sure you're going to smash and set up other businesses as you progress as well. So uh, thank you so much, Rob. Appreciate cool. it. No worries. See you later. Bye-bye.